I need materials for this project, but I'm completely out. I've looked everywhere. Well, not everywhere. So, I collected up all these gorgeous materials from the trash compactor and I'm going to be turning them into a YT-1760 from the Star Wars universe. Now you may be asking yourself, why the YT? This is the ship that my character captains in my Star Wars 5e game, so I'm going to be making the ship at roughly 28mm tabletop scale. I'm starting out with the round base of the rocket ship. To do this, I'm gluing two takeout containers together, using a strip of cardboard to act as a spacer. This will later be filled with some nonsense machine details. The combination of baking soda and superglue creates a really strong bond that helps keep it together, but also helps create a seal between the plastic pieces. The nose of this UFO is a toothpick container which I chose because of its flat planes. This makes it look more like a windshield and just generally more spaceshipy. Here I'm gluing the bottom of a different spice container to this toothpick container to turn it from an innie to an outie. Then I start cutting out a space for it, without measuring. This was a mistake. I took apart a cool looking spray bottle and cut the main plastic triangle pieces in half. These will act as the base for the front wing things. I filled both sides with foam board and created a sloppy siding using some green stuff. And this is where I realized that the piece no longer fit in the hole that I cut. Okay, so day one did not go well. I have this to show for it. I glued two to-go containers together and then I ruined it. So I'm going to turn the front into the back, hopefully be able to salvage this piece. What I learned is that you can hot glue pieces together before you use super glue. Sand things down before you super glue them together or they will not stick. Use cardboard when you need it. I'm gonna try this again. Off camera using a sturdy cardboard box, I made the ship's octagonal bum. I reinforced the structure with a mayonnaise lid on the inside. Now I'm gluing some cardboard to the outside of a pill bottle for detail. These will be the big engines. Feeling confident with the way it was looking, I finally adhered the nose and bum to the belly. Going back to the pill bottle engines, I'm filling the open cavity with a lot of hot glue and small moisturizer lids. Then I'm going back and adding the pill bottle lids back onto the back end of the engine. Here I'm sawing off the bits from two highlighters to use as smaller engine thingies, and just living my best trash goblin life. Off camera, the spray bottle wings were glued into place, and also the takeout containers were looking a little too recognizable, so I glued a small margarine container into the center, and now I'm rounding off the edges with some scrap plastic from an old journal. Now I'm gluing another container to the top. I don't remember where this container came from, but it had nice round edges. And I think this area is where the gunner sits. I had to re-glue these pill bottle engines like five times, but with it all put together, it's starting to look like something. So it's time to add some more details. I took apart some old headphones for this project. Here I'm using the bud part as some engine-y detail. Now I'm making an octagon with some cardboard to cover the ugly side of the butt. And here you can watch me sacrifice this chip clip to the crafting gods. I use a bunch of these broken pieces as surface details throughout this build. Off camera, I made a paper template for the window details and then I cut the final version out of cardstock and then glued it to the toothpick container from earlier. The top is looking pretty good, so I moved on to the bottom. 
I needed to round out the planes like I did above, so using a box from the most delicious flavor of White Claw Seltzers, I cut the right shape and glued it in place. I filled some more gaps with cardboard, and then, just to shake things up, I used some balsa wood to create these half donut shapes to hold the exhaust pipe things. Speaking of exhaust, it sure was tiring cutting off all these bits. And it's hard to see, but I used the textured part of zip ties glued together to make it look like the inside of vents. Adding some more junk plastic for some plate details and some more headphone bits as greeblies. These green bits that come off superglue containers were essential in making this build, and also show you how much superglue I used in this project. Here I'm using some zip ties to add a little texture, and then I'm using the ends of the zip ties to add a little surface detail. Now I'm marking out where I want to score the plastic with a purple sharpie. Pro tip, don't do this. Sharpie can bleed through primer and paint, but luckily, purple is particularly noticeable. Moving on from that future disaster, I'm going to make myself a tiny gun, starting with the same green bits from the superglue containers. Next I'm going to add the barrels, which are tubes from a broken pen. And then I'm cutting off the ends of superglue bottles to act as the ends of the gun. Next, using some bits from the spray bottle I took apart earlier, I made a base for the cannon, and then I put it all together. Also, I used magnets so that it could spin around. This mostly worked. I did have to make an aesthetic frame for it later off camera. Never waste anything! Here you can watch me surgically place the cords from the headphones I used earlier as pipe and wire details. Now I'm adding some leftover plastic junk from my over the garden wall build. This came from a bubble gun. Some areas were harder to detail, so to add some visual interest, I'm taking a wood burning tool to etch some details into those larger planes. Fire! I'm using a lighter to burn away any loose, hot glue strands. I added a few greeblies off camera, but here it is, all junked up. Finally, it's time to prime. Unfortunately, the primer revealed a bunch of hideous gaps, and I didn't have any gap filler, so I made my own goop out of gesso, mod podge, crushed up cat litter, and baking soda. It got the job done, but it was a bit too textured. The ship is already primed white, so of course, I'm gonna paint the whole thing white. Here I am mixing my perfect blend of Star Wars off-white to put on the entire boat. I'm painting the windows black, but we'll get to those later. Any metal bits were also painted black, later to be dry brushed with a metallic color. Next I began painting individual panels different shades of grey to show that the plane had undergone a lot of repairs. A lot of this color scheme is inspired by the Millennium Falcon. Now I'm highlighting some of that etched detail with a little bit of grey. In our home game, our ship just got a fresh coat of paint, so I'm giving it purple decals to reflect those upgrades. But it's still a piece of junk, so I'm giving the whole thing a nice coat of rust using different shades of brown. I did go a little too far with the grime, so here I am cleaning it up with a bit more white. I thought it would be cool to make it look like the engines were on, but it was not cool. It looked very, very bad. But after I fixed that, the paint was pretty much done, so it was time for a car wash. Oil washes are toxic, so you should always do them outside or in a well-ventilated area. I don't have a well-ventilated area, so I put on my respirator, my sandals, and I went out in the snow.
I recently picked up some white spirits, which is what most people use for oil washes. It has very different properties to the solvent I was using before. It went on much darker than I expected, so enjoy as I scramble trying to dilute it and wipe away the disaster of a wash I put on. I was panicking pretty hard at this point. I thought I ruined the whole thing, but with a lot more dilution, a lot more time, and wiping away, I was able to get something I was happy with. Once the wash was dry, I was able to go in with some additional weathering, some chipped paint effects, oil leaks, and bringing out any details that the wash missed. And finally, I went in with a dry brush, some metallic paint for the metal bits, and some white for the rest to bring out some more of those edge details. And normally that would be it, but I thought it would be cool to add a windshield effect. So I mixed together a two-part resin, and I poured it over the windshield areas. To answer your question, yes, it did drip all over the front of the ship. And you're right, I should have taped off that area. But you live and you learn. And it turned out good, so... No lesson learned. And with that, it's time to blast off into the reveal. The first thing I thought when I finished this project was, I think I can do better, so I think I'll be doing another Star Wars build soon. Subscribe if you'd like to see me make more stuff about stuff. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me make next, and I'll see you next time. Bye!